Hey, everybody. I want to thank you so much for listening to Our Kids Play Hockey, especially this time of year when it's hot outside. And we got a new thing we're doing right now. We have created a new hockey ball in part with Milek Hockey. These are low-bounce hockey balls. They are perfect for the summer. And here's the best part. When you buy a three-pack of these at HockeyWrapAround.com or Amazon.com, we are going to be donating a day's worth of meals for a puppy in need at the ASPCA. Only when you buy these balls. Again, they're called the My Ball by Hockey Wraparound. You can get them at HockeyWrapAround.com or Amazon.com. Every purchase donates a day's worth of meals for a dog in need via the ASPCA. But without further ado, we want to thank you for listening to Our Kids Play Hockey. We're going to jump right into the episode. Check out that promotion. HockeyWrapAround.com, Amazon.com. Just search My Ball by Hockey Wraparound and help a good boy out there. Enjoy the episode. Hello, hockey friends and families around the world, and welcome back to another edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Our Kids Play Hockey. What happens, Christy, when you're the new kid playing hockey or the new family joining a hockey team? That is today's topic. It's the perfect time of year to talk about it. You out there, you are either someone who knows or you are a new kid entering to a new team. Again, we're not necessarily talking new to hockey here. We're talking you've switched clubs, you've switched teams, you moved, something happened where you are joining a different hockey club for this season. And today, Christy and I are going to discuss the tactics, the tips, the things you need to know when you enter into that new environment of how to make it peaceful, how to make it fun. Once again, Christy Casciano Burns, I'm Lee Elias. Mike Benelli is on assignment in Norway this week. Lucky guy, right? Yes, and he'll, he's going to come back with so many great hockey stories. We can't wait to share them with you. So it's just you and me, kid. That's fine. Let's I'll get take started. It. I love these episodes. Let's, Go ahead, Christy. Why don't you dive in? Let's, let's start talking about just the feelings before we get into sure. how to address those feelings. So think about it. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a new team, a new school, you know, a new town. There's anxiety. There's mm. apprehension. Um lots and lots of nervousness for these kids and all these questions pop in their minds. What if, what if they don't like me? What if I'm not good enough? What if the coach is mean? There's the kids stomachs are probably in knots just thinking about all the things that they don't know. Right. There's that fear of the unknown. So you got to address it. Um, you've seen it with kids who've come on board who are brand new. And I saw it with my own daughter. I'll, I'll set an example. She was um, at a private school, high school. Her high school did not have a girls hockey team. They had a boys team, but not a girls team. The opportunity came knocking on her door to go play for a high school, public school. She didn't know a single kid on that team. Um, no one in her school, her great play girls, played hockey. It was all foreign to them. So she decided to be brave and try out for the team. But before that, my goodness, wasn't she thinking about everything <laughs> that could go wrong? And the thing that I said to her, I said, Sophia, yes, all of your concerns are legitimate. That's natural. That's normal. And this is something you're going to deal with for the rest of life. When you go away to college, you could be the only one on that campus from Syracuse, New York. No one else. When you start a new job, there's going to be all these people who you don't know anything about. And now you're about to try out for a team. You know nothing about these girls, but you do have something in common. What, mom? What do you think? You have hockey in common. You're a girl who loves hockey. All of those girls on that team love hockey. That's something that, oh, my dog is so excited about it. That's <laughs> something that no one else in your high school class does. So, so immediate boss, right there, right there. Yeah, but, and I'll dive into, Christy, about the feelings. And, and again, anytime you mention Sophia, I know that the dog's going to jump up and start talking to us on the air. We're a dog-friendly show. I've always said this. We'll never turn a dog away on this show. Um, <laughs> Sorry you know, about that. The feeling, I, I want to dive into the feelings too, because depending on the situation, the feelings can change. And, and this is an interesting topic for me because from the age of 12 to 19, I never played for the same team twice in a row, Okay, which is very unique. Uh, I don't recommend this to people. This was just happened to be how my journey flowed. I started hockey a little bit late. 
a lot of this was just me kind of uh, jumping levels. And, and, and I'm not bragging about that. I'm just saying I was on yeah. a different team from my second year of PWE, my first year till college. I never had the same team twice. All and right? how did you feel about that? Well, Before again, you joined the team, there were those what if questions, right? What if, yeah. what if, what if? Yeah. It, and again, it depends on the scenario. So I remember the first time I went to a new team, I was wanted. I was asked to be there. Um, I was almost recruited, if you will. So it was a nervous excitement of, I don't know these kids, but they want me to be here. I feel very mm -hmm. welcome. And I want to be yeah. part of this club. There were times I had to leave clubs because I didn't feel welcome. Right. Uh, and then you go to a new place and you have this weird, it's a fresh beginning, but I have no idea what's going to happen. The right. question, is it going to be good enough? Am I going to be good enough? Are they going to teach me? Are they going to uh, 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 show me the game, right? Uh, a lot of different times. And, you know, as you get older, you, you start to learn how to deal with it a lot more. Uh, sure. But a lot of different times, you got to really sit with your feelings and discuss them. Now, luckily, luckily, I had really great parents that sat down with me and really could see that sometimes I was struggling a bit. And they would help mm -hmm. me at least ask the right questions. Um, yeah. That was something that I learned, especially about coaching, is that, you know, there's that saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make the horse sure. drink. Right? right. So a lot of times what I like to do is provide the person I'm mentoring or teaching with the right questions they should be a asking. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not really on me to give them the answer. Right. Mm -hmm. I think this is a mistake a lot of people make. Well, they don't feel that way. You should feel this way. Well, that mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's an easy thing to say. The question you should ask is, what are you feeling? Can you identify mm -hmm. it? Okay. Why do you think you're feeling that way? Parents, you probably know the answer. Right. You were a kid mm -hmm. once too. We always say, oh, that kid wants to. But you got to <laughs> let your kids explore that because, Christy, you made this really great point. What I learned in those, um, you know, five years, six years is how to do it, right? So by the time I got out of school, and I mean college, going mm -hmm. to job interviews, going to new yeah, jobs, exactly. I, I, mean, it was, mm -hmm. I don't want to say it was easy, but, man, I, mm -hmm. I knew what I had to do. I understood my feelings. Right. I understood the situation. And I think that gave me a massive competitive advantage in interviews because I had yeah. done so many. Um, I think I've seen that with my own daughter too. Yeah. And even going off to college, she knew how to acclimate so well because she had been in situations where it, it and there was no one else on her college campus from right. Syracuse, New York. She was it. So um, it, it repeats in your life. So learning these early coping skills yeah. will really benefit your kid throughout their lives. Yeah, well, and I can tell you this too. My my wife served honorably in the United States Air Force, and in that scenario, you have to move. Yes. Three years, you go into a, a, Great a completely new place, mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes a new country mm -hmm. with new people. And in I remember I always had a pretty seamless transition. Um, that wasn't as easy for her, but it 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 goes back to what I was saying. I've had to do this my mm -hmm. my whole pretty much teen and adult life. So. Yeah. We're going to discuss some of those things today that make that easy. I'm not going to lie to you. Anytime we moved, anytime we changed teams, anytime I changed schools, jobs, you're going to feel a little apprehension. You're going to feel a little anxiety. Sure. Um, but I think once you realize, look, that's normal, right? And then you can ask yeah. these questions. Hey, what do I bring to the table? What kind of person yeah. do I want to be? Now, yeah. let's, let's, I'm going on a soapbox. Let's reel it back into hockey. That's my fault right. because we want to go into some of these tips and tactics. I do want to give a shout out again to your book. The book, this entire show is based off of my kids play hockey available now, wherever <laughs> books are sold. Uh, but Christy chapter, uh, I think it was 52, 52, the new kid on the team is what gave mm -hmm. us this idea to talk about today. But I think that the first thing is let's let's look at it from the kid and the family perspective. The first thing you should do is get yourself involved and communicate and talk and introduce yourself, right? Um, if you just yeah. show up, it can be really hard. All right. Mm -hmm. And and to be fair, sometimes families show up and nobody talks to them. I'm gonna talk about that right. a little bit later in the episode. Mm -hmm. Communicate, introduce yourself to the coaches. Hi, I'm mm -hmm. Mr. or Mrs. This is my son or daughter. Hopefully your kid is old enough to do that themselves as well. Mm -hmm. And actually have a conversation, right? Um, times not to do this five minutes before the first practice, All right? Coach is thinking you, you, this could be a phone call. This could be, can we get a cup of coffee, have a 15, 20 minute conversation with the coach, with the coaches and just explain who you are. And then when you get around the other families, introduce yourself. All right. Great. Hockey's great already advice. contentious enough. Yeah. Right? right. Break those boundaries right away. Mm -hmm. You agree with that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, introduce yourself. Don't be that parent who stands off in the corner. And because people get impressions from that. Oh, they you, they're, good, they're not good enough to, <laughs> to be with the rest of us. Right. You know, you, they're reading you. They're trying to read you. And if you're throwing off these vibes that 
you don't want to be part of the team immediately you're going to get labeled oh right. they didn't even want to come sit with us oh look at that they're off on a corner you know introduce yourself explain who you are t- tell them who your kid is share the number oh my what's the jersey number right, right? which That's one's yours which one's yours yeah. which, yeah. which one is yours mine's 15 <clears throat> you know oh okay so then because parents like to connect the kids with the parent and right. to kind of put it all together um, you definitely have a conversation with a coach early on. Let them know who you are, uh, what your kid is all about. If there's any kind of special circumstances with your kid, open up that door of communication early so that they kind of know, you know, hey, you know, my daughter has certain issues with, I don't know, I had the, the, we had this one parent whose daughter had issues with um her her skin it was very sensitive Mm -hmm. um and so she had to wear kind of some some special gear so right away the parent let everybody know so that there weren't any kind of misconceptions about what was going on there um and i love that i love when parents are really open with you and explain situations like you know my kid's a diabetic so that's why i have to pull them off the ice and 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 then look knowing that we all carry you know sugar snacks right, in case right. you know, she ran out in, in her friend you know all that stuff all those little things that kind of make either your family unique or special you know let other parents in on that because you really will bond closely and you will help each other and develop as a team but the more you know about each other the better it is um the other thing is um when the kid finally gets to walk in the locker room you know, make sure that they're carrying an aura of positivity about Big them. His yeah. kids will gravitate toward that. If there's a chip on the shoulder, tell them, knock that chip off. You're yeah. not better than the rest of the kids just because you came from a triple A team. And, you know, you're going to be with kids who may not be up to your level. Be helpful. Be positive. Um, don't fall into the trap of um, that negative um, gossipy, you know, circles that can happen. And that's the same for parents too. And I think if you set that tone in the beginning, it's going to be so much better for you for the whole season. And, and I'll say this too, make sure that you're very clear with your instructions. I'll give you a quick, funny example. Uh, I told a new kid one time, Hey, be a leader. Just kind of like, yeah, be, go be a leader in there. Um, which I meant by example, you know, just work hard, be a leader. And yeah, that yeah. kid took that as when it going in there and saying, God bless it was my fault. He said, I'm in charge. I'm the leader. Oh, no. and, I, and I was like, Oh right. no, I that's bet. not what I meant at that all. That went over like a ton of bricks, yeah, right? It was my fault though. Cause I didn't, I didn't, ex- I could, I could have just said, Hey, I just want you to lead by example. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, I spoke I'm to the him. Captain. Right. It's, <laughs> it's kind of how we took it. Right. And, and again, like, like as an adult, I, I took that, I oh, said it the way I would have taken it at that's my so age. Funny. But it, again, he was, he was younger. So I had to pull your words again carefully and, yeah. and say, yeah, no, look, this is what I meant. That's my fault. I told him it's my fault. All right. Um, be a leader on the ice. Nobody remembered it. And he, he was, he was a leader on the ice after that, but mm-hmm. what you say and what you explore really matters. All right. Um, and again, look, especially when you're dealing with kids, um, speaking to the kids a little bit here too, uh, a little bit, a little bit, of horseplay, you know, jabbing, talking back and forth, maybe a little making fun of sometimes that's how kids break bonds. I don't love it. It's not my right. favorite thing, but yeah. always remember this when no one's talking to you, parents or right. kids, that's a problem. Right. right. When people are talking yeah. to you, and I'm not talking about bullying my friends. I'm just talking about the normal talk in a locker room. Right. right. That can be a good thing too. Um, like again, we had a kid. Oh yeah, that that, that yeah. Chat, because I can remember my son walking into the locker room. He was, you know, new on the team, and one of the kids said something like, "You're really gonna wear that sweatshirt because right. exactly you know they were opposite, opposite yeah. of the team. Yeah, you know, yeah. a little smack. Like, You're really gonna wear that into this locker room, and Joey knew right away. <laughs> I'm going to bond with this kid. Right. You know? yeah, don't internalize yeah. it to the point that you get inside your own head, right? If someone's right. talking to you, that's a good thing. And same thing with parents, uh, Christy, you said this earlier, but I want to say it. The parents are a team as well. The parents yeah. are a team as well. And we've all in youth hockey had good parenting teams and bad parenting teams um, or, or, or split decision. I always like to say sometimes there's uh sane and insane, you know, you know who you are, but the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, you, you got to have those conversations. You got to get to know each other. Uh, another great example, you know, my son has asthma. Um, and again, I made that known. It was important. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there were situations during the season where 
he didn't have his inhaler or someone didn't have their inhaler. And we knew that and we were able yeah. to help that kid out. I mean, again, that's a right. little more medical, but that's the, mm -hmm. that's the bond, right? You got to find yes. those pathways. I'm glad you brought that up because that that's really important that everybody knows that because, you know, uh, parents may get the wrong impression about the kid. If he's having trouble breathing Oh, you know, what's wrong with that kid? Right. Oh, right. Oh, I get it. You know, right. yes. And who asthma, knows if, if that makes sense. the other kids might not even know what asthma is. Right. Right. So, I mean, I mean that sometimes, you know, if you don't know it or no one tells you about it, you see a kid hyperventilating, you think what's going on. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so little things like that are important as well, yeah. but I want to go back to the positive attitude. Um, and so this yeah. is going to kind of apply both the kids on the ice and parents in the stands. Don't overdo it. <laughs> don't mm -hmm. overdo it. If you're a new kid on the ice and you don't know the drills, you don't have to go first to prove a point. Let, let the team do the drills, watch them and learn. I'll tell you right now as a coach, Christy, that I don't want anybody messing up the drills. And I definitely don't want you messing up the drills because you're trying to, to make a, a good impression or trying to be overzealous with your impression. I'd rather you learn right. the drills and execute them well, right? And I also rather, if you don't know a drill or you've watched it and you don't get it, you should come up to me and say, I, I don't get this. Can you help me? And I might say, look, after practice, I'll show you for sure. But that's the type of stuff I'm looking for. Ease mm -hmm. yourself in to the team. If you don't understand something, ask. Another part of not being overzealous is if we're, if we're if you're old enough that you're playing a system or a four check, mm -hmm. uh, ask if you don't get it. Don't mm -hmm. don't just go out there and try and do mm -hmm. what you think you need to do. Ask. I've said it mm -hmm. before. One of the greatest coaches I've ever had. He could see that um, in my I think it was my third year of playing that my skills were improving very fast, but I didn't have a, an understanding of the tactical side of the game yet because I was so green to the game. And he, mm -hmm. he, me, he showed up an hour before every practice and showed me stuff on a whiteboard. I am forever uh, thankful for that man for doing that because uh, yeah. I needed to learn and, and I wanted to learn. Um, I've always attributed that's probably one of the reasons I became a coach is because of those those sessions. But ask, don't be overzealous on the ice. Ease your way in. Parents, the same thing. You don't need to go in and volunteer for every little thing and burn yourself out and overdo it. People see that stuff. <laughs> Just go in there but and be a good person. We do person. need to step up and be a part of the team Absolutely. and volunteer. Don't right. assume that everybody's going to, because you're new on the team and there's a well-oiled machine and you don't want to step and ruin anything. Right. They need your help. They always do. So, you know, don't overdo it, but definitely don't yes. set, set back that you're just letting everybody else do the work. Yeah. With that said, I think getting involved in an appropriate way, like you're saying, is the yeah. best thing you can do. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. don't volunteer for 75 positions. Just hey. get involved, right? Just get involved yeah. and see what you can do. Hmm. So I'll tell a really cool story here about a young man that I coached that um, he moved from another state mid-season. Um, this was a few years ago. He, he jumped on my son's team and he was a little bit taller than everybody else and a little bigger than everybody else. And uh, you could tell he was nervous. He was somewhat newer to the game. Again, younger ages. I think we're talking 8U at this point. Um, and he started to kind of bully the kids a little bit. So when anybody would make fun of him, he'd throw a punch. Really, this is where this was going, where he'd, he'd push him. Uh, he had the size to do that. And it was getting to the point where I noticed as a coach and as a parent, it was starting to concern people. And the fact that yeah. the kids, that you hear it, the kid's a bully. I want that kid to stop hitting my kid. Um, none of those sentiments were correct. Uh, I'm sorry, incorrect, but they weren't providing any solutions. So I pulled the kid aside and just started talking to him like, Hey, how's it going? How's your new school? How's the new team? Uh, very shy. And I knew right then that all right, yeah. this is, this is how he is choosing to respond to the right. anxiety he's feeling that to the, to the nervousness that he's feeling. Mm -hmm. And so all I did, um, and, you know, along with his parents was just talk to him and ease him in and have him have a good time. And I started, putting him in situations where he had to be cooperative with his teammates, not, not, uh, you know, versus his teammates all the time. And as they got to know him, you saw the bullying start to go down. We did have mm -hmm. a conversation that that's not the appropriate way to get your teammates to like you. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. I don't want to, I don't want it to be uh, left that we didn't say anything. We told him you, you have to stop doing that. You're becoming a disruption and that's not okay. Mm -hmm. um, but slowly but surely he, he eased his way in. He became a good member of the team and he's one of my son's best friends now. Right. And, and yeah. I don't even remember mm -hmm. that time period, but not right. only one of my kids, best friends, but he's a real asset on the team that he's mm -hmm. on. Right. But it was about the way we started the show, recognizing the behavior. Mm -hmm. He was lashing out because he was nervous and he was, he had no friends. He had moved and he felt the need to prove himself. And that's how mm -hmm. it manifested itself. Gotcha. So coaches, 
as coaches, it's really our job to recognize that behavior. Now, if it didn't stop, I have to say this too, Christy, if it didn't stop, they continued to do that, we would have gone in a different direction um, sure. with discipline and other things. I'm not going to allow a kid to bully anybody on my team, but right. I didn't jump to conclusions. And uh, his parents, um, who are wonderful, wonderful people, because I, I remember thinking, these are really wonderful people. And this kid's being kind of a jerk. And that that doesn't compute. Right? right. Usually the kids that are jerks, their parents are uh, of, of that of that branch, too. Um, and I talked to them, too. And it was a cooperative experience. And, and they were so appreciative of it. But I, I told them, I really think your kid's a great kid. I also understood having switching switched teams so many times, I understood what he was feeling. Right. Yeah. So look, look, the broad point I'm making is this. It's responsibility on all of us that if you have a new kid to make sure that you help ease that kid in. Kids are going to exude different forms of behavior mm -hmm. if they're in that situation. It might be bullying. It might be really quiet. It might be shy. It might be great. Some kids thrive in that environment. Mm -hmm. But it, you got to recognize the behaviors just rounding this out again um, from a coaching standpoint, a parent standpoint, and even a kid standpoint. Right. So we talked about when your kid is the new kid on the team. Let's also bring into the discussion what happens if a new kid is joining the team right, right, and your kid's already bonded with a whole group and you're a tight knit group and out an outsider's coming in and maybe <laughs> an that outsider. kid was somebody who, right? The outsider, right. maybe that kid was on a team that you played against and right. he was, you know, yeah, maybe he was the competition or he was the, the kid that you hated. And now, he, now you have to play with him or her. So, have a conversation with your kids too. When you know a new kid is coming on the team, hey, look, at this isn't easy for, you know, Alex. This isn't easy for, you know, Sophia. The new kids on the team, make them feel welcome. You need to do that. That's your job. You need to be a part of making that kid feel like they're also part of your team and belong there. So your kids also play an important role and being welcoming, as much as the parents need to do that too with new families that come on board as well. Yeah, I, I think you're hitting the nail on the head here. I was always taught, and you know, God bless my parents for for kind of instilling this in me, that when I got a new teammate, I was pretty quick to go up and introduce myself, even at a young age, and just say, hey, I'm Lee, welcome to the team, glad you're here. Um, you know, sometimes, most of the time, they turned out to be a great teammate, sometimes they didn't, but I wasn't going to uh, not do that, right? And right. the same thing with the family. You know, I can tell you right now, um, especially if if a family is is from another place, maybe that maybe English isn't their first language. It's a right. big deal to them when you go up to them and introduce mm -hmm. yourself, all right? Because parents can be very shy too. They don't want to mm -hmm. mess up the waters or the ice in this right. case, right? Exactly. So I, I'm telling you this right now to everybody listening. If you have a new family show up, it is a huge deal to them. If you just go up and say, hey, I'm Lee, I'm Logan, or I'm Alina's dad. Um, that's them right there on the ice. You know, which one's your kid? That little conversation breaks the breaks the ice. <laughs> you know, pun intended. I love that. Maybe right? that's what we'll call this episode, breaking the ice. Breaking the <laughs> ice of being a new hockey kid or new family. Um, but I, I just also think this goes beyond hockey. This is just the right thing to do, right? You know, yeah. if someone moves into your neighborhood, this is something I'm seeing mm -hmm. now. Uh, we don't see as much in society. You know, you, if someone moves into the house across the street, yeah. obviously give them a minute, but go introduce yourself. That's your neighbor. Right. You're going to be living right. with this person on your street. Um, yeah. It's no different in hockey. You know, and there are going to be some parents who fear that the new kid is going to take my kid's spot mm -hmm. on that line. Right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it <laughs> happens. I mean, it, it's it's a ridiculous fear, but it, it does go through your mind. Right? It does I mean, happen. Yeah. And it, they can get nasty. And they can try and get you to join them in, you know, being nasty to that family. It happens. Yeah. You know? well, I, and what I always tell families is, look, uh, this is assuming there's not extreme politics on a team. That's mm -hmm. chosen on my teams by the performance on the ice. And even exactly. if I have a kid, and this is my, mm -hmm. my, my coaching philosophy, not everybody shares this, uh, but Mike says it too. If I pick a kid on my team, I pick them so they could play. Right. And I think one of the things that I see a lot, Christy, just to, to snap on this point real quick, is there's a little too much focus on what line is my kid on and not mm -hmm. enough focus on this is the team my kid is on. All right. Because I can tell you right now that uh, a third line center 
mm-hmm. is just as important as a first line center, mm-hmm. as long as they understand their role or, or a bottom defenseman, however you want to quantify it mm-hmm. on a team. Everyone needs to know they're part of the team and they have a role on that team. Everyone in youth hockey should play. There's no scenario mm-hmm. where a kid should not be on that ice playing um, uh, 99% of the season. All right. But that's the, the note I always try and tell every family and every kid. Well, why isn't my kid on the top line? And I sometimes I'll ask, what does uh, the top line mean to you? <laughs> I'll ask yeah. that to families, right? And what, uh, yeah, because what they don't want to say is, well, it's the best players on the team, because it sounds weird when you say that, right? Your kids on the team, they're part of the team, they understand their role. Yeah. I, I also think too, parents can sometimes disconnect. I'm speaking from experience; they can disconnect from what the kid is actually feeling. I've had mm-hmm. so many parents, uh, not so many, I've had parents come up to me and say, well, "My kid's not having a good time." And it's, it's, you know, I'm like, I'm, I don't get that impression. I mean, have you yeah. talked to the kid about that? I yeah. said, are you not having a good time? And I'll kind of, I'll kind of massage what made my way into that conversation. Are you not enjoying yourself? And that mm-hmm. you think that that's the experience. And, and mm-hmm. it's not always the case. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, well, I'm not happy about this. I'm like, all right, well, your kid is happy. Let's, let's right. we can talk about why you're not happy, but don't yeah. come, kids not happy when I see him smiling the whole practice. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so these no, are some I, of the outcomes have, if you don't talk. Yeah. I have seen jealousy among parents oh, that yeah. really, it eats them up. It, it They get so bitter and nasty and they try to spew poison in the team because their, their kid got replaced because they weren't really performing where the coach thought they should. The coach thought they're better suited on the third line right. instead of the first line because here's this new kid came in is really good um and this one mom she oh <laughs> she could not handle it couldn't handle it and it just became she just awful for her she yeah. didn't enjoy the season she's always you know yeah 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 uh complaining and finding fault with the coaches with the new player it, it, it's just, it was eating her up. Um, so hopefully if any parent is listening out there and that situation happens to you, do you really want that to be the case? Um, a whole season just ruined because you can't get over the fact that your kid needs to work a little harder, yeah. needs to play a little uh, faster, work on their speed. Instead of using it as a positive and saying, look it, you know, you're not, and and also poisoning the kid too with yeah. that kid's there because you know they know somebody. It's all politics. No, that kid is there because that kid's good. Yeah, you know, just accept the fact that sometimes in competition, the better player gets the better job. Well, I, I'll also say <laughs> it's this: just the way it works. Um, I was able to, uh, and I do this with my, the kids I coach too. When when I see a, I, I saw a kid that was better than me my brain would turn towards, uh, it, not in a jealous way, but in a good way. Okay. I want to compete against that kid because I'll learn something. I, I, if I skate with him, if I, if I keep up with him, if I challenge him, I might lose yes. 10 times out of 10, but I'm going to learn something because it's the only way you really grow in the game. Right. So if a new kid shows up uh, for the rest of the team, if that kid is extremely talented, this is an opportunity for you. I'll equate it easier, right? Um, I've been on teams where the goalie is by far the best player on the team by far. And that goalie has a choice to make. They can roll their eyes and say, I'm too good for this team. Or they can look at the team. And I've had conversations with goalies about this and say, you're so good that our kids are going to become better shooters just by shooting on you at practice, but you have to give them your all. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's usually nine times out of 10 turns into a really good experience for everyone. And look, Mm -hmm. if a kid is, is honestly too good for that level, I hope that they excel. I just saw this last season. We we had a peewee in our organization excelling. And he's going up to a higher level this year. And nice. everyone's happy for him because it was right. done the right way. Right? He's ready to right. move up. Um, yeah. It wasn't too early. It wasn't too late. It was the right time for this kid to move up. But to your point, if a kid that comes in with more talent, that's an opportunity for everyone to learn. Assuming that that kid has the right attitude, that comes down to parenting right, right, and coaching right. as well. Of course. Um, yeah. I hate it when I hear, well, my kid shouldn't be here. They should be there. Well, then you coach the team. If Mike was here, right. you, you coach the team and you – you understand the cohesion. Cause I can tell you right now, parents, if you load up a top line in lines two and three, and if you have a fourth line or not there, you're not going to win many hockey games or, right. or that you are going to win a lot of games. And a lot of your kids are not going to be involved in those games. Right? right. It's a development situation. 
Um, wow. Last story for me, um, again, using my own experience because it's kind of pertinent to this episode. Uh, I remember I switched the team one time, again, as I did every year. Um, I was easily the fastest skater on this team. I was driven. They gave me an A on my jersey. I mean, they really nice. built me up mm -hmm. in a really great way. And they put me on the third line as a center. And I remember at first going up to the coach of like, I don't understand. What a blow, right? <laughs> yeah, I was, I, I didn't understand. I was like, wait a minute here. Like you're giving me all these, are you just, is it lip service? And to this coach's credit, he sat me down and he said, look, and this is true. He says, you're having problems scoring. And he was right. I, I really, at that time, I, I could not score for the life of me. I could get the puck in the net. I had a lot of assists, but I, I had a hard time scoring at that time of my, my life. And he said, you will anchor the entire team on the third line because wow. of your speed. He explained it to me and he wasn't, it wasn't lip service. He said, this is what I'm seeing. Your speed, you, you make that third line a threat. He goes, it, you can continue to pass. You'll be on the power play. But he's like, I need yeah. you down there because it, it it bolsters the whole lineup. And we won a championship with that team because wow. of all this. He was Great right. Story. But the key yeah. was it was explained to me as the new kid. Right. Mm -hmm. You're a leader. That's why you have an A. Your speed is a threat in this scenario in this way. Your lack mm -hmm. of scoring is why you're not on the first line. But you will accomplish this on the th that communication mm -hmm. was essential. And here's the thing: I totally bought into it because of what right. he said, right? Right. And, and that was the year I understood of oh, I don't right. need to be the top line center right. to be an impact player on this team, mm -hmm. right? So again, if I'm not careful, we'll turn this into a different episode. Communication. Right? <laughs> it comes that out was good this. though. That's a yeah. great. That was that is exactly what I'm talking about. Right. Right. Um, and that that coach communicating with you is so critical because kids are going to think they're they're being put on that they're like, I, I stink you know yeah. i'm not good enough that yeah. all kinds of thoughts are going to go into her. but when it's explained that way how uplifting that is that yeah, so energizes well. so you. well done i mean he he yeah. he and i still to this day don't think he was giving me lip service i mean he made me believe in that role and we won together i'm going to tell you this right now for, for the most part when you win a championship you don't care where you are. Yeah. I mean, true. look, if you if you're not playing incorrectly, you, you care. Yeah. But I'm saying when you win, you feel great yeah. that you won, right? Yeah, you feel yeah. great together. I mean, yeah. and, and those teams typically win. That's the thing, right? Yes. Um mm -hmm. you, you can have all-star teams sometimes if they're at the wrong mm -hmm. level. I'm not talking about the the outliers. Right. I'm talking about that. Right. But look, rounding this out, because again, a little bit of a shorter episode today. If you have a new kid, if a new kid comes into your team or you're the family on a team where a new kid's coming in. It's all about family. Just make them feel welcome. Make them understand. Lots of good communication. Get to learn each other. I always say this too. You don't always have to like another person, but you should respect them as long as that respect's being returned. There are outliers. There are people that show up. There are coaches that will absolutely absolutely sell their soul to the devil to bring in the greatest player of all time, play that kid over everybody else. Those situations do happen, but we're not really talking about those situations today. All right. Th those are, that's a whole nother episode about politics. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're talking about the new family with a good kid, a good mom, good dad, whatever it is, welcome them onto your team. Right. And, and uh, for those of you listening again, if you are in this situation, this week's ride to the rink is going to be all about if you're that kid. So if you have a kid that's going to be new to the team this year, make sure you listen to our ride to the rink episode, uh, which comes out on Thursdays where we're talking directly to your kid. But a lot of good information here. Make sure you go pick up My Kids Play Hockey. It is it is the sister companion to this entire <laughs> show. We should write another one of these, Christy. I agree with that. We're going to do it. We're going to do, do it. it. All right. Christy, we'll any final involve thoughts? We'll our listeners, too. You'll be a part of that book as well. We should reference that. Any uh, any final thoughts before I close this out? Um, uh, yeah, because the season's coming up. A new season's going to come up. Brand new opportunities. So, you know, if you were negative last time, you know, pivot, right? Change your attitude. Love it. Um, be welcoming. Um, be that positive force on the team. You get another shot at it. So uh, it goes by fast, folks. Let me tell you. <laughs> and you want to make each season the best season. Here's your opportunity. And and I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm so thankful for you, Christy and Mike, because you've mentored me through my youth journey so far. And if there's anything I've heard people say, it's this goes fast. Enjoy so fast. it. It's going to go fast and enjoy it. And, and again, my final thought is this. Every situation is an opportunity. Good, bad, anything in between. Don't lose sight of the focus here, parents. This exactly. is your kid's opportunity to learn and grow to be a better human being. Hockey right. is a vehicle for their growth as a person, right? 
that is above all. I, whether it. they make the league, the NHL, it, it doesn't matter. That's it. This is a vehicle yeah. for their growth. So right. make sure you're approaching every good situation, bad situation, middle situation as an opportunity to ask great questions, to make sure that they're critically thinking, to put them in environments where they are uncomfortable because they're going to be uncomfortable after school. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. It's just inevitable. Yeah. Right. It happens. Help yeah. kids and if you blew it last season, clean slate. Yeah. You get to get another shot at it. Yeah. <laughs> I always say any day I wake up vertical is a good day. Right. So that's what most of you. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Again, if you have thoughts on this or if you're a new kid or new family heading over and you want to discuss it a little further, feel free to email us, team at ourkidsplayhockey.com. Uh, and I always like to remind everybody, our Facebook group has grown tremendously. It's just called Our Kids Play Hockey. We have a Facebook page and a Facebook group, but the conversation continues on Facebook a lot of times. You can post on there and uh, really, it's us getting back to you, which is really cool. Can't thank all of you enough for being loyal listeners. You have made this such a successful program, uh, and we really love coming here every week, even if Mike's in Norway. Christine and I love coming on here every week. <laughs> That's going to do it, my friends. Have a great week. We'll see you next time on Our Kids Play Hockey. Skate on. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Make sure to like and subscribe right now if you found value wherever you're listening, whether it's a podcast network, a social media network, or our website, ourkidsplayhockey.com. Also, make sure to check out our children's book, When Hockey Stops, at whenhockeystops.com. It's a book that helps children deal with adversity in the game and in life. We're very proud of it. But thanks so much for listening to this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey, and we'll see you on the next episode.